welcome you all to the lecture series on corporate law the present lecture is devoted to the concept of lifting of corporate veil that is limited liability to unlimited liability this is professor kondaya jonalagadda then we are introducing the subject and discussing the lectures on series manner and this is the fourth lecture in series and one of the fundamental principles of corporate law which contradicts between the two principles that is limited liability to the unlimited liability the company came into existence with the concept of to avoid unlimited liability because in the case of the partnership firm the partnership firm the partners are liable unlimited because the personal liability is there therefore the evolution of the company law has come and the companies act came in the united kingdom and other parts of the world with the concept of the limited liability now let us see one of the famous and landmark case in the era of the lifting of corporate veil that is solomon case right solomon case now i try to introduce this subject of lifting of corporate veil going back to the years of 1896 taking the clues from the original text of the judgment because it was a judgment delivered by the house of lords in the year 1896 now in 2022 how the judgment will have the relevance in the present con- context there are two people or the two persons approached the court before the house of lords by original appeal this is a salman arman salman the pauper versus a salman and company limited this is the respondent and by cross appeal salman company limited versus arman salman so the dispute is between salman versus solomon company right a limited so it is a public limited company where the disputes which you have started when you see the head notes the head notes means when the judgment was given how they write the head notes in the united kingdom courts right if you read it here a company that is a private company one man company and limited liability concept right in the 1896 the judgment which was delivered by the house of lords talks about limited liability concepts and the concept of the one man company and the fraud upon the creditors let us see the facts of the case in a brief right what was written how it was written by the judges particularly lord halsbury right because the judge one of the judge in this case was lord halsbury where all the law students they know that the halsbury laws of england volumes the facts are very brief a trader that is mr salmon a solvent business sold this solvent business to a limited company with a nominal capital of 40000 shares each company each the company consisting of only vendor wife daughter and four sons who subscribed for one share each all the terms of the sale being known and approved by the shareholder that means mr salmon right sold his business what is the business he was doing he was doing manufacturing of right leather shoes so he has a business of shoe business which was run in the nature of the partnership firm so the partnership firm business which was running he converted that business into the company now let us see what happened in part payment of the purchase money the debentures forming floating security were issued to the vendor 
ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड शेयर्स वर आल्सो इश्यूड टू हिम एंड पेड फॉर आउट ऑफ परचेज मनी दीज शेयर्स गेव दि वेंडर पवर ऑफ आउट आउटिंग द सिक्स शेयर होल्डर्स नो शेयर्स अदर दैन दि दीज ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड सेवन शेयर्स वर इश्यूड All the requirements of the Companies Act were fulfilled. The vendor was appointed as the managing director, and the bad times came. The company wound up, and after satisfying the debentures, there was not enough to pay the ordinary creditors. Now let us have the discussion on this, because you are finding over the very important terminology of the corporate law terms. if i explain the terminologies in very brief right the terminology is very brief what happened is that mr salman right salman and his six people of the family wife and the four children and this daughter right five children totally five children so you have the four sons and one daughter then you are having the six members and salman totally seven members brought the business out of all the shares the all the shares were held by mr salman that is he is having the shares of a uh, 20000 right 20000 one shares six shares are given to the his family members so mr salman is having all the shares with him and the family members like the wife daughter and the sons they are having each of them one one share just for the requirement of the seven members he floated a company of the public limited company in turn the company also taken the loan from mr salman where the salman become as the creditor that's what they says in part payment of the purchase money debentures forming a floating security were issued to the vendor Twenty thousand shares were issued for a purchase money. So there are two issues are there. Number one, Mr. Salman is the founding director and the founding member of the company. He is also that is called the vendor, Mr. Salman, become the managing director. Bad times came. The company was to wound up, and after satisfying the debentures, there was not enough to pay the ordinary creditors. because there are two issues which comes in this case whether in real sense the company was existing or not the issue of the debentures were there now when you little bit go back the facts and the law which was discussed is that the privy council held it is not contrary to the true intent and meaning of the companies act 1862 for a trader in order to limit his liability and obtain the preference of a debenture holder over the creditor to sell his business to a limited company consisting of only of right to sell his business to a limited company consisting of company himself six members of his family when the business being then solvent that was business was flourishing all the terms of the sale being known to approved by the shareholders all the requirements of the companies act are fulfilled the point is to be remember irrespective of the factual situation the requirement of the companies act were fulfilled right that means a company was incorporated as per the provisions of company law that is 1862 companies act there were seven members seven members were incorporated the companies and the dispute was happened later because the good business become the bad business company invariably have to close it and there was a dispute with regard whether this company was created only to avoid certain obligations under company law or is it a fictional one or is it something which the running business of the good company are the good partnership becoming as the solvent company as insolvent companies so what happened in this case was that the debenture holders right the debenture holders who is the debenture holder mr salman is having the 
role of the debentures. If we see the facts of the case once again, Mr. Salman, who is the promoter of the company, who is the managing director of the company, who is the shareholder of the company, and who is also the debenture holder of the companies. In all in all, in all respects and all times, Mr. Salman himself is playing the different roles in company. Then the fundamental question came whether in real sense this company is existing or not. Because its family members, wife, daughter and sons are having one one share and they are not performing any active role in the companies. When the company become insolvent, then the case was brought before the court of law by none other than Mr. Salman the pauper. So he became the insolvent. He brought a case against the company which he, inc he incorporated that I have to be paid money first, then others have to be paid money later. This was the original applications. Let us see the case, how it came before the uh, UK courts. Mr. Salman, who became the insolvent, he is an appliant and against a company brought a original case stating that as a creditor, I am supposed to get the money first and the remaining of the money can be given to the shareholders of the companies. So here, Mr. Salman is having the roles like, for example, he is the promoter of the company. He is also the shareholder of the company. He is also holding the concept of the debenture holder. And he is also the managing director of the company. He is soul and soul having the different roles in the company. Now the first time the issue has come whether the person who is having the various roles can be legally validated or whether he can hold all these posts etc and all. Because what is the basic purpose of the Companies Act 1862? Because Companies Act has been created for the specific purposes. In that, the court said that it is not contrary to the true intent meaning of the Companies Act in order to limit his liability and obtain the preference of debenture holder over the creditors. To sell his business to a limited company consisting only of himself and six members of his family. The business being then solvent, all the terms of the sale being known to and approved by the shareholders. All the requirements of the act being compiled. That means all the requirements of the company's act was fulfilled because nothing has been left as a lacuna in the incorporation of the companies. Now, what was held by the, the court? It was held in this court. The proceedings were not contrary to the true intent and meaning of the companies. That the comp company was duly formed and registered, right? The company was formed and registered. It was not an allies or agent or a trustee of the vendor. So you are getting a point. The point is that it is the company is not the agent. Company is not the trustee. Company is not something related to the members who promote the companies. And that he was not liable to indemnify the fact that company against the creditor claims. There was no fraud upon the creditors or shareholders that the company or liquidator showing in the name of the company, right, was not entitled to rescission, right, rescission the, of the contract for purchase. So the question they brought is that whether the company was existing in real sense and it was held by the court that the company was existing all the times and all the principles, all the rules which are supposed to be followed was done. Company is not agent of the individuals. Let us have the fundamental understanding of the principles. That means if the A, B, C, D, E, F incorporate the company called X Limited 
once you incorporate a company individuals are separate and company is the separate so therefore they brought the concept of separate legal personality so now what is this concept of separate legal personality and lifting of corporate veil on the factual sense on the factual sense it was done by one person that is mr solomon right there is no dispute in this case when you talk about the solomon versus solomon case mr solomon is the only person right existing in all the times and doing all the functions of the company that is as far as the facts are concerned and there is no disputes as far the facts are concerned in the eyes of law right in the eyes of law the company comes as separate legal personality right so the separate legal personality comes in this case is that company is a separate as far as the existence of person in the eyes of law now if we read the original text of the complete judgment we don't find anywhere the terminology of the concept which we started discussing lifting of corporate veil but the house of lord said that in the case of if there is a fraud which has been done by any of the members of the company then the liability can be questioned at the later part of the time the court held in this case was that the company is a separate legal personality from the members and the promoters who promoted the company that is what the case judgment stops and they also comes with the principle in the case of the fraud right in the case of the fraud then the question of the liability comes whether it goes on the limited to the unlimited liability or not because the fraud was discussed elaborately in this judgment whether any fraudulent transaction was happened or not there was no fraud in sense which happened in this case the fraud was not done because mr salman fulfilled all the obligations mr salman followed all the rules of company law which was given under the companies act and fulfilled under the rules of the companies act 1862 see it is the case which you are reading from the 1862 companies act so once the rules and regulations and the procedures are followed and once the company comes in existence that the name of the company is a salman and company limited right so when there is a company called a salman and company limited and r and salman who incorporate a company both becomes separate legal personalities like so one is arman salman then other one is about the salman and company limited now after looking this particular case from the original text right now what are the takeaways what is the relevance of judgments of 1896 to 2022 why should we read this particular case in today's world and what is the relevance of the judgments of salman which comes as a separate legal personality right this is where they talk about separate legal personality apart from the people who are incorporated then what are the interesting principles that comes to application of law now i am taking some of the principles which i started in the my commencement of lecture showing you that limited liability to unlimited liability limited liability to unlimited liability means try to understand the members of the company who promotes the company they have the liability to the extent of the subscription of the shares that is called as limited liability say for example a subscribes one share rupees 10 his liability is only to the rupees 10 this is what we read in the initial class if mr a purchases one share a price of rupees 10 his liability is at 10 and a purchase the shares of 10 and holding again another responsibilities 
and the responsibilities are fulfilled in due diligence then as a course of the natural business or ordinary course of business that what called the performance of the particular duties when the duties are performed in the good faith always the person is being protected now i am bringing one of the important provision of the companies act that is section 7 of the companies act now what it says the li liability of the members the liability of the promoters right the liabilities of the promoters are the people right you know the people responsible for incorporation of companies the tribunal can direct the tribunal can direct in the case if the members acted a fraudulent transaction or fraudulent action right if there is any fraudulent action committed by the members of the company their liability is not limited their liability is unlimited this is what called you lift the veil right you lift the veil becomes the liability of the members to the liability of the members to the unlimited liabilities so company law comes with regard to personal liability some of you may can have another concept what is this unlimited liability in company law it is as simple as that attachment of the personal properties and in the case right if there is a criminal penalty given to the company we cannot send the company to the jail because company exists in only legal fiction then who has to go and serve the sentence in the jail in that case the members who are responsible for the wrongful act they have to undergo for the punishment however there are certain exceptions that who will exactly will be liable that is another new concept another different concept but in the real sense the people responsible for conducting of a fraudulent transactions will become liable and section 7 comes with regard to the if any fraud happens at the time of incorporation of companies right section 7 talks about incorporation if there is there any fraudulent activity at the time of incorporation of companies the persons who are responsible they become liable by virtue of lifting of the veil this is what we say today lifting of corporate veil is codified under the companies act section 7 sub clause 7b talks about limited liability becomes unlimited liability when there are fraudulent transactions now i am just going one step forward there are various provisions in companies law which talks about the liability of the persons one of the foremost important section is section 447 section 450 of the companies act section 447 talks about punishment for the fraud please remember fraud is a principle based of corporate law fraud you read in the indian contract act fraud you read in the indian penal code fraud you read in the civil obligations if there is a fraudulent transaction which happens in any activity in performing of the duties or people are doing intentionally fraudulent transaction the people becomes liable so try to understand the concept which you want to say that reading of the lifting of corporate veil in a simple concept is that the people who are responsible for any fraudulent transactions acting on malafide intentions by lifting of the corporate veil they becomes personally liable salman versus salman case explains for us a single concept that is called as the separate legal personality company is different from the individuals who are incorporated this was the very interesting whenever you get a time that who has interest they can read the original text of the judgments is one of the beautiful judgments makes all of you to make understanding instead of reading the in the pieces right you know uh, from the textbooks very small small concepts so in brief if i recapitulate for all of you and this is the original uh, text which we am referring again there are two parties in this case arman salman 
Popper versus Salmon and Company Limited. And in the brief, today's company is sacked, that is, company is sacked 2013, section 7, 7 subclause B, talks about limited liability to unlimited liability. So kindly remember this concept for the actions which called as fraudulent transactions. If there is a transaction which is fraudulent, then people becomes responsible. We cannot bring the concept of that is the company is responsible, company is a separate legal entity and individuals are separate. So this is where the concept of lifting of corporate veil comes. Individual people becomes responsible who involve in the malicious and fraudulent, not bona fide transactions, the people who becomes. Here I take your leave, just it's a small concept of the corporate fail. Again, we will meet in another lecture, that is lecture number 5, on the continuation of lecture series on corporate law. Hope you are all reading, you are all understanding and listening the concept. Listen patiently, try to understand the concept of corporate law. Right? Thank you once, thank you one and all. See you again. Take care. Bye.